So we have an update on the whole DMCA strikes over images from anime going on, and it turns out it was not actually Shueisha who was striking them. In fact, it was actually a resentful One Piece fan that was apparently going around false flagging people. So at least we now know who it actually was. Hey, what is going on, everybody? How are you all doing today? I hope you all are having a wonderful and fantastic day today, and if not, hopefully you all will have a better tomorrow. So, there's an update on the whole issue with the DMCA strikes on Shueisha and what's been going on with that. So it turns out it wasn't actually Shueisha, which is good to know, because as many know, there was a new law that was put in place this year with anime and piracy and things of that sort, Many fans had thought that it could possibly be Shueisha. Now, they didn't 100% know for a fact. I didn't either. Thought that it might be bots, even. And that's what I was thinking, at least. That they might have hired a third-party company to go after them and have bots. Well, they came out with a statement right here where they stated the official statement from Shueisha, which is from Viz. And this is what the official statement from Shueisha actually says. So it states, It has come to our attention Shueisha has been falsely misrepresented by an individual sending copyright and removal requests on Twitter and other social media platforms. Shueisha is currently consulting with the various platforms to investigate what measures can be taken to address this issue. So, turns out that it was never Shueisha all along, and that's a good thing, because I had questioned myself whether it might have actually been Shueisha hiring a third-party company and then them using bots, which bots can get things incorrect. So I thought it might have been bots that they might have hired and then wasn't sure the difference between what copyright material was and wasn't. But, turns out it was actually a resentful One Piece fan. Update, Shueisha DMCA strikes allegedly a false flag attack by a resentful One Piece fan. It appears the recent wave of DMCA strikes seemingly issued by Shueisha against content featuring their various anime properties did not come from the Shonen Jump publisher themselves, but rather a seemingly disgruntled member of the One Piece fan community. And we're going to get into a lot of that. So, shortly after receiving his own respective strike over his Twitter account's One Piece related profile picture, seeking to unmask the full truth beneath this complicated situation through extensive research, One Piece fan site, the Library of O'Hara administrator Arthur, launched a personal investigation into details surrounding Shueisha's alleged DMCA campaign. In an extensive report published following the conclusion of his investigation, Arthur confidently claimed that he had discovered decisive evidence that this entire incident was an orchestrated attack that was not caused by Shueisha. The entire thing was a hoax. And this is something that content creators like myself worry about all the time because there are people who will impersonate companies and they'll come in and strike videos when the videos were under fair use. I'm not even kidding. It's ridiculous. We're going to get into that in a moment. The attack was very evidently done manually, explained Arthur, meaning that this individual claimed images that would not be considered an infringement of rights and people have rightfully pointed out that any company would be out of their minds to attack some of these choices, such as fan art or cosplay. Oh yeah, in which the fans at that point, they will then stop trusting a company, which they can lose money and business that way. And it really can become a big problem. As evidence that the strikes did not originate from Shueisha, Arthur revealed that the official looking signature attached to the supposed DMCA email received by numerous social media users was false, as the included phone and fax numbers were actually those of publisher's competitor Katokawa. Oh, well, you know, that'll prove it <laughs> right there. But it doesn't end there, he added, because if you properly investigate, you'll even find out that the argument being made in the complaint about defending Shueisha's own properties is actually copy-pasted from a generic description found on Shueisha's own company website. Oh, <laughs> yikes. As for the culprit themselves, Arthur announced that the individual posting a Shueisha was a certain individual who has been harassing other creators under the same tactics who he believes was undertaking the rampant copyright abuse in an attempt to target content creator Jessix. After exercising a fraudulent claim against Jessix for a short Dragon Ball video posted on her Twitter, the individual messaged the content creator on Discord and threatened Jessix with the claim that they had previously sent and fully admitted to their guilt of these being fraudulent claims and not owning rights. And see, this is a serious issue because, like I said, anybody 
can come in, they can pose as a company, and then they can just abuse the system. And this is something that needs to be fixed. You know, they need to have a way to show that a company is actually certified, like they're the actual company. And without that, anybody can just do this, which is ridiculous. And here is the Discord conversation between the two, the person with their name crossed out. Hello, Jess. I will be giving you until the end of the day to delete all clips on your Twitch channel. If tomorrow they are still up, then IFPI will be DMCAing some of your clips. I would also like a response by the end of the day. I don't like to be ignored. So as you can see, he's going after her here. She states, if you can provide that you own the rights to any of these songs, all along with the timestamps or links to the clip, I would be happy to take them down. The person says, if you don't do what I say, you will be DMCA'd. Thank you for reaching out to me today. Let me make sure I understand you. You were saying you do not own the copyright, but you are going to file a DMCA against my content anyway. And the person responds with yes, which, you know, this is very disgusting because they are going against fair use by going and just trying to copyright strike people. And they're also impersonating a company, which isn't right and also can get you in serious trouble, which can actually lead to a lawsuit even, you know. It's really bad to do things like that, obviously. And, you know, this person, I've heard rumors that they might get sued for going and claiming that they were Shueisha and trying to copyright strike people. So that's the rumor I've heard about it. And, I mean, like I said, this is something content creators always worry about all the time. But it gets even deeper. However, despite this admission, the individual continued to target and threaten Jessix, culminating in a bizarre and unsettling message in which they requested that she become my girlfriend. Jessix was targeted individually at first without any other users, and later everyone else was included as collateral damage, wrote Arthur. Given the stalker-like attitude of the messages, it is not surprising Jessix is being dragged through this entire matter and proves even further that this was a calculated attack that ended involving the entire community. And, you know, there was a lot of people that got hit over this. I mean, and some of their... Twitter, you know, was just locked out. I mean, there was even an artist, Fershuasia, that even got hit over this. I mean, it's ridiculous. As his research drew to a close, Arthur concluded that all evidence seems to point to an individual abusing the copyright system of Twitter to harass and attack many individuals by posing as a company they do not represent. Furthermore, the evidence points to this individual being someone who has harassed, attacked, and threatened several content creators in the past with a long criminal record of copyright abuse, he continued. In an attempt to attack one of them, they have gotten involved the entire Dragon Ball and One Piece fandoms. And see, here's the thing. Uh, one issue that can surface, which has happened to many people before, is that somebody could just not like somebody, right? And then they'll go after them and strike their content, whether it be on Twitter, whether it be on Twitch, whether it be on YouTube. You'll see this happen. I mean, it's ridiculous stuff. And just because they don't like somebody, they'll do it. You know, and this is how easily the copyright system can be broken. I mean, it's absolutely absurd. I mean, it's good to see that the Dragon Ball community and One Piece community stood up and did something about this. Uh, you know, but this was a serious issue. And on top of that, well, you know, Shueisha did respond. They did it a little late because listen to how late. It was. This article actually goes into that. Shueisha denies copyright strikes against Twitter accounts. Now, it's good that they did deny them, but listen to how long this took. Last week, several Twitter accounts were locked after copyright claims from Shueisha, one of which was an official artist for their Dragon Ball Mobile games. The outrage caused Shueisha to trend for nearly 48 hours. 48 hours. And throughout it all, Shueisha said nothing until now. I mean, that's absurd. They should have said it way sooner, and this issue could have been resolved a lot quicker. But instead, 48 hours of trending. I mean, that's nuts. Shueisha issued a statement that the copyright strikes were from a third party using the company's name without their consent. Shueisha themselves stated that they had no involvement in any of the copyright strikes against Twitter users. This comes with a statement on their Manga Plus website stating that they have been misrepresented by an individual. Currently, Shueisha is investigating the incident to find the person that is misrepresenting them and will decide on a legal course of action to take when the time is appropriate. But, I mean, it's just, it took so long, which that's the thing that's so frustrating about this entire situation, because had they done something about it sooner, that would have been a lot better. I mean, 
But the thing of it is, is that they didn't say anything for several days, went trending for 48 hours, and they finally said something. I mean, like, you know, that's bad on Shueisha's part. They should have definitely responded much sooner to this. But at least they're going to be trying to have a lawsuit once they find out who it is. So that's good. Once they get to the bottom of that, you know, that'll be great. And I think that they do need to do that. And thing, though, is that, like I said, this system needs to really be fixed because it's so easy to just impersonate someone and then do that. I mean, it's ridiculous. And that shouldn't be going on. And, you know, you look at the law because, you know, a lot of us were thinking that it could have been because of the new law. You know, maybe they hired a third-party company that used bots and went after them. Uh, so, you know, I want to take a look again at this to just kind of explain some things. So looking at this article, Japan has just passed a new law that criminalizes manga piracy and also to the websites that link to it. The parliament passed new copyright amendments last Friday, which this was all the way back in July of last year. That banned the unlicensed downloading of manga magazines and academic texts from the internet. The new law will take effect on January 1st, 2021. And a lot of people thought that this whole copyright strike thing that was going on on Twitter, they thought that this was actually because of the law, because they may have hired a third-party company to go into this or some law firm to go in and take care of this. That's what they were thinking it happened. That's what I thought it happened. But uh, it turns out, you know, obviously it was somebody else. The law revision came as the country saw a rising number of piracy and leech websites, notably the Mangamura site, which had over 100 million hits a month before being disabled in April 2018, causing an estimated loss of more than 300 billion yen, which is $2.75 billion to publishers. If you are caught downloading illegal manga, users will face up to two years in prison and find up to 2 million yen, which is around $18,000. See, this is where I have a little bit of a problem with this, is that I can understand if they're going to go and try to get the websites taken down because, you know, that's damaging them financially. I get that part. But going after individual users, I think that's a bit extreme because it should be these pirating websites is what they should be going after, not the individual users. The new law also bans establishment and operation of leech sites pasting hyperlinks to illegal websites on an anonymous message board or providing leech apps for similar purposes. Those found to be operating a leech website will face penalties of up to five years in jail or a maximum of five million yen or both. The senior official of an agency said the new legislation is expected to have a significant deteriorate effect as research by an industry group shows existing legal restraints on illegal downloading of music and videos had positive effects. Now, think of it is, is that even though you can go after pirating sites, just remember when you take one down, you know, there will be like five, ten more that will take its place. I mean, <laughs> that's just how it works. But like I said, I understand what they're trying to do here. So I see what they're doing. But think of it is, is that when it comes to the whole, like, DMCA strikes, you know, people can easily go in and they could just claim to be these companies, though, which is a very big problem. I mean, at least when it comes to this law, you know, you look at, like, fan art and things of that sort, you know, that doesn't affect the material, which is safe. You know, it's under fair use. That's perfectly fine. But at least we now know that it wasn't Shueisha that did this. At least we know that they didn't do it. And hopefully they'll do something legally against the person that was falsely claiming to be them and striking people. But anyways, let me know what you think about this entire situation down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here. And make sure you are still subscribed because YouTube is unsubscribing people from all the favorite channels. So make sure you are still subscribed to all your favorite channels. Hit the video with a like and also be sure to share the video on social media. Spread the word and get it out there. It's greatly appreciated and it really helps out the channel a lot. Also, be sure to follow me on Discord. We have a wonderful community there. Not only that, but it will keep you up to date on when the newest videos will be released, as well as any other upcoming events in the near future. So be sure to follow me on Discord. The link is in the description down below. But anyways, I hope you all have yourselves a wonderful and fantastic day today. And remember, if today was not a good day, tomorrow can always be better. Take care of yourselves and everyone around you. And have yourselves a good one out there, everybody.